playlist, my CS101 playlist. Okay, here's what we finished up. We did a lovely looking little budget sheet and with an added pie chart. There's our pie chart. What did we do for Excel? Well, we did most of the work. We filled in commission, we filled in internet costs, our estimated internet costs, but then we made Excel do the work when we came to the formulas. How do I see all my formulas? Control, control squiggly, there you go. Control squiggly shows me where all my formulas are. That is where Excel is doing the work. Do the control squigglies to make sure you're not just filling in numbers to make it look right. Because we want to make Excel do the work for us. Okay, that's how we finished that last one. I'm gonna close that because I'm done with it. And going on to the next project, which is going to be using more of those formulas. We're gonna create something that looks like this. We're gonna have a bunch of employees listed down the left with their email addresses, how many dependents they have, and how many hours they worked. That's stuff that we just know about them. So we're gonna be typing in information about them. And we're also gonna type in their pay rate. So this part here is the information we're putting in. The rest of the table, their, their gross pay, their federal tax, their state tax, total tax, net pay, and oh, I guess we're entering when they got hired. All or much of the information in the center of that table Excel is going to be calculating a little fancier formula. Now, can you guess what the formula would be for gross pay if we know their hourly pay rate and their hours worked? You work 10 hours, you get paid $10 an hour. How much do I owe you in gross pay? Hours times pay per hour. So we're going to do a simple multiplying hours times hourly pay. Tax rate, though, that's a fancier formula that the government tells us we're going to use a government formula to figure out your federal tax, another government formula to figure out your state tax, total tax though will be those two added together, net pay, oh, that's almost like the marriage saving formula, will be gross pay minus tax. Now in the real world out there, your net pay is not just minus tax, it's minus the various costs you put in for your, all your benefits. They don't just give you benefits. They, you have to pay a percentage of your benefits, your percentage of your health care, for some goes into your 401k. Your net pay is a much more fancier formula in real life. But we're doing a simple formula to make this you know, exercise a little easier. We're going to do some other things. Statistics on numbers, highest, lowest, average. Sometimes those are interesting numbers for accountants. So let's get started by starting Excel and we're beginning a new blank workbook. You don't, you don't need to take any tours or make pivotable things or have power queries. That's for future advanced work. Okay, so we started a blank Excel worksheet and we're going to learn about formulas as we go. Our, our plan is this kind of plan where we have Headings across the top of, of those various columns, and then numbers go down with information. General look like that, so that's our plan. And we're also gonna be having a title across the top, Club Core Engineering Salary Report. So we'll just put that information in, and remember how we did last time, we'll come in later and do the merge and center stuff. But first, we'll just get the numbers in here. So let's enter our titles, and the title is going to be See, title A1, we'll put that in A1, eventually going to be merged and centered across, is Clapor Engineering. Clapor, and let me zoom in here for you. Clapor Engineering. And A1, cell A1. Cell A2, later going to be merged and centered is going to be salary report. Salary, not salary report. Report. Notice there's no spell checking, no red squiggles. Later on, you can do review spell checking. 
And in cell A3, we're putting the heading across this column is going to be the employee name, employee. And now we're going to enter the rest of the cell headings across the top. And then get, I got a list here. We're going to first employee, and then we're going to have their email address. Tab or arrow to the next one, and in there is going to be their uh, dependents. Now, don't worry that we're wiping out email address. That's just hiding behind there until we, until we uh, adjust our column width. Dependents, and then hours. This is something we're going to enter, how many hours they've worked. And then, oh, uh, we're going to do something different here with hours worked. We're going to go to hours, and we do want a worked to be on the next line underneath. To force a new line here, we type in alt enter. Alt enter forces a new line rather than have it tromp out to the right. So we're, we can say hours, alt enter, worked. A little trick when you need to have two lines there. And I'm going to come back there to, I think, email address. Uh, no, I guess we're, we'll let email address handle it, be handled a different way. So hours worked, alt enter to make sure it broke up into two lines. And then we're going to do hourly pay rates. Do the same thing, hourly. And then alt enter to force it to go to a new line. And pay rates. Alt enter forces a new line in the middle of a cell. Remember, if we did a normal enter, it takes us down to the next cell. Alt enter tells Excel, wait a minute, I don't want to go down to the next cell. I want to make a new line in this data. Arrow to the right, and what we're putting in here is gross pay. Gross pay. And arrow to the right, federal tax. These are becoming these are going to be our headers across the top. We'll see later that we can make the cell, the words wrap automatically, which I like better than forcing a new line. State tax, right arrow, tax percent, using the little tax percent symbol, right arrow to the next one, net pay, right arrow, and higher dates. And later on, we might have something in that column. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see the completed cell so far. And then we're going to start entering information about our employees. There we go. So higher date, all the way out to higher dates. I'll zoom in a little bit. There, I didn't want to cut off higher date. Now we're going to enter some names for and salary data for our employees. And they give us this information in our textbook. I will. Yes. Um, every time I get all expenses, it continues to lose everything I have. Do you hold down all? Yeah, you hold the you hold yeah, all hold down. Yeah. Let's go see. Let's see what's happening. We'll start typing. Showing you kind of like arrow board around that. Now we hit right there and see how that took off. Oh, we're down 22 lines there. Okay, oh, got it fixed. All right, let's continue then. Now it's just a matter of entering some data that Excel is going to have to work with. So I'll zoom in this section here to make it readable, and one by one we're entering our employee names. Now one thing they're doing that I don't like is they're 
employee that putting their employee name all on one cell, I would separate last name and first name because then I can alphabetize by last name or first name. They're putting it in in this way, Altor, comma, Benny. And because we're gonna, I'm gonna go name the next person, I'm gonna hit enter. And I'm gonna adjust this column so I can see the full name. I'm gonna double click on this column. Uh, it, uh, actually, I'm gonna manually stretch out because there's gonna be longer names than Benny Alto. Stretching it out so I can read all my names. And Fox, Linda. You said a 16? What about? Oh, it's an eight. I have font size of 11. We can always come back and adjust the font. I'm using just the default font size. I'm talking about from the eight or the What? Oh, double click on the Where? line between A and B. I just manually dragged that over. Doesn't really matter how wide right now. I'm just making sure it's wide enough for all the names that are gonna be typing in. So yeah, the width of that column doesn't matter. Later on, once I have all the names in, I can double click and it'll auto fit the longest name. So hand oh, here's the probably here's probably the longest name. Hand field comma Germain. Hitting enter takes me down to the next row. Linda Fox. I'll zoom out so you can see all the names. Fox. Now, if you notice, sometimes you start typing something, it thinks it can help you by suggesting things. Those get kind of annoying. You can turn off suggestions, but we'll leave it, since it's on by default, we'll leave them in there. If you would like, you could put your name in there. Oh, I forgot to put in Steve. And Wilson. Okay, so there's our names. A very diverse workforce. Now, if you want, you could double click on the border to fit it to all the names. Now I'm skipping the email address because we're going to come back and do something special for email address. We'll just enter the number for dependents. They give us a table three one zero two one zero three two one, and they have a table from their uh, time card system. This means children. Yes, it means children, and including well. Yes, it means children because in taxes, you're considered your own dependent, but they're talking about for calculating your taxes, they're going to be dealing with how many children you have. Oh, I forgot. I forgot 74.5. I'm going to edit that. 74.5. 80, 71.5. 80, 71.75. This is numbers that Excel is going to need from us to do its other calculations. We just have to manually type these in. Somebody's 80 hours worked. Boy, that's that's a problem. I should be overworking that poor person. Especially when they had three kids. Yeah, what's going on? That's why it's slavery. Yeah. Linda Fox and Jill. Maybe they're discriminating against the women, making them work super hard. Maybe they're just very hardworking women and they deserve high pay rates. Let's see what their pay rates are. 35.25. Oh, wow. 28.65. Oh, wow. $18 for Ben? He must be a new guy. Yeah, Ben. 25.9. He's the male guy, I guess. Ben sounds young. 1.95. We can move things around. Easy enough to move things around. Don't panic if you have them in the wrong row. It's real easy to move it. And let's see here. And I can go way over to hybrid date. Everything else here, we're going to let Excel do the work. Hire date, we're going to enter dates for their hire date. Nine, 
5, 10, 10, 17, 12, and it automatically puts in 2012, 2, 2, 13 for our date, 1, 15, 16. I don't remember if they actually use higher date in any of the calculations. We'll find out. Some people are super fast on that little number pad. Okay. This is the information that Excel needs from us. We're going to be letting Excel do all this work here. And we'll be coming back and formatting the numbers to be a little nicer looking because whenever you're dealing with dollars, we're going to be putting them in, in comma format. But we'll leave it in this format for now. I'll give you a little time to finish entering because the next thing we're going to do is figure out how to, a cool way to enter something like email addresses using a thing called flash fill. But I'll give you a little time to finish entering your data. Thank you. I was demanding to still wait for you come on you. All right. data in there. Now it's time to do a thing called flash fill. What we're going to do first is enter the first email. Let's get let's adjust this column a little bit because emails get kind of long. I'm going to adjust that column a little bit. Let's put what Bernie's email would be. Well his email is going to be bealtor at example let's example.com. Let's put clapor.com. Why would his name email be example.com? Let's put lepore.com. That's his email address. We have one example email address. We have to enter one more before we can do our flash fill. Linda Fox, her address is going to be L Fox at clapore.com. Now that I have two examples of what the email should be, we can tell, oh, it's going to be the first initial, last name. Based on that, we can do a thing called flash fill. Watch very carefully. Let's do 
the flash builder's right. I'm gonna make sure I do it right. So I go to select after after finishing boxes, I leave my I think I leave I select that one. Oh no, I don't want to email that one. I just want to select that. Leave that selected, and now under data, let's see if we can do the flash fill. Data, where's our flash fill? You see a flash fill here? Where's my flash? Uh, it's middle, to the right, up, top, left. There we go, yeah, it's hiding, it's not in the same as in the book, it's hiding here on this little icon right here. Let's see what happens if I do a flash fill. Automatically fill in values, enter a couple of examples, and Excel will help you out. Let's, I don't know why this had to pop up. Okay, flash fill. I have the one example. Let's see what happens. Flash fill. Whoa. What? It guessed what the other email should be based on a couple examples. Now, it did also fill in things where I don't want an email filled in. So I can come up here and delete these two and just hit delete. But it filled in the others for me using this cool flash fill technique. So that's one little thing there. Remember what I had to do though? I had to get a couple examples and then data flash fill did the rest of the work for me. Pretty cool stuff. All right, now we're ready to let Excel uh, do some work for us. But we're gonna, we have a few more rows that we're gonna put at the bottom and then we'll come let Excel fill up some things in. So we're gonna have a totals row header right here. We're gonna put totals here. And then under there, we're gonna have highest, lowest, and average. Highest, lowest, and average. Excel is going to be doing this work for us. And I'll bet you if I had this filled in, it would have tried to guess at some email for me, but I don't want it to do that. So we're going to be entering some totals, highest average, lowest average. Let's make those bold, because these are going to be row heading. Let's control B, make those bold. And now, let's see here. There, We're going to change our tab color to blue. I don't know why we care about their tab color right now. We're going to call it salary report, and we're going to change its color to blue. So I click on that sheet, right click. Tab color, make it a blue, choose whatever blue you like there. And then I'm gonna right click, rename, and call it salary report. So now you have done it twice now, you have renamed a tab and you can color it. Now it's time to enter formulas. Okay. This is where Excel does the work, as long as we give Excel the right instructions. And what we're going to do is only worry about Benny, and then we'll copy all the formulas down for all the other employees. Let's only worry about Benny right now, or Beanie, however we pronounce that. Yes? Uh, Mr. Manley, if it's not uh, auto-filling for you or flash-filling, what do you think? Oh, uh, type, in a, type in a couple more email addresses, and then do try the flash-fill again. Let me come see what's going on. I hate that if you click on the email, it wants to go start up the email program. Click to the right box. Go to the right. Don't click on the email. Click on the right little asterisk. Okay. And then up arrow one. And now try the flash code. See if it has enough to figure out the flash code. Right-click, nope. Right there on the beach, right-click. That deletes the column. 
So it doesn't it doesn't know to look further to the left. You would think it would say, Oh, I'm in column C, I see a pattern over an A. We just learned something about flash fill. Unless you're next to the column, it doesn't look further. He accidentally had an extra column in between and the flash fill stopped working. Okay, let's go ahead and figure out Beanie's pay or Benny's pay and then we'll copy it down for all the others. Can you figure out what gross pay should be? I type equal to start a formula. Remember, equal starts a formula in Excel and I can point to the cells that have to do with gross pay. Well, it would be hours worked, click on hours worked, that puts in D4, multiply by the number, by their pay rate. So the asterisk, shift H, that is our multiplication symbol. Asterisk is multiply. And then I can type or point to E4. That's the formula for gross pay. My hours worked times my pay rate. Makes sense, doesn't it? How, my, how long I work time, how many, how many hours I work times by pay per hour gives me my gross pay. Enter, and Excel does the calculation for Benny. Now, federal tax, I'm just going to give you that government formula. They mysteriously came up, for, up with it. There's no rhyme or reason to any government formula. But to start the formula, remember that equal sign. The equal sign says, I'm starting a formula. Now, the calculation is this. 0.26, 26% of your gross pay, which is that F4 that I just calculated, minus the number of dependents I have, times some number that the government came up with, 22.16. I get $22 per dependent decrease in my tax. So my dependents aren't worth a lot according to the government. But it does reduce my tax a tiny bit. So there's the formula for federal tax. See how it includes a reference to number of dependents. I get a reduction in tax based on this mysterious government formula to calculate my federal tax. So see the parentheses are very important. It's 26% of this number inside the parentheses, my gross pay reduced by how many children I have times 22.16. That becomes my federal tax. Now hitting enter then, Excel will do the calculation. And what did I do wrong? I found it type. Oh, that's right. I forgot to put the asterisk there. Yes, and it, it did the right correction. Oh, I'm so used to in, in algebra not needing it. It's 2.26. So don't forget both asterisks. Very good. Thanks for catching that. And it's corrected that for me. Isn't Excel so nice to me? Now, for state tax, it's a little less of a complex formula. But remember, I started with the equal sign. The state tax is simply 5.5% of my gross pay. Yes. Can you do that? Oh yeah, the grow the federal tax formula. I just double click on it. Let me let me enlarge it here. I'll enlarge it and then double click so you can see a little better. It's 0.26 times. I forgot that times. First of all, parenthesis F4, which is my gross pay, minus my dependents should be over there in C4 times 22.16. If you forget the if you forget the last parenthesis, I think it will also add that for it for you if you forget a parenthesis. If I hit enter, I think it will say, oh, you forgot a parenthesis, I'll put it in there for you. Yes, that looks good, and I hit yes. You can always go back and see your formula. Clicking once, you see it here. Clicking twice, it shows it in the cell. Okay, got that? All right, so state tax is a very simple 5.5% of my gross pay. So equal, 5.5% is the same as 0 0.055. And I multiply that by my gross pay, 0 0.055 times gross pay. That's my state tax. F4, click or 
click on F4, it'll put it there. Remember, if you're pointing and clicking, this is a part. If you hit, if you go click somewhere now, it's going to put the wrong cell in there. So once you get that formula, hit enter now before clicking anywhere else, or your formula will go bad on you. Because it's when you click, it thinks, oh, you must want that number instead, and it'll put in a wholly different number. So we click there and then hit enter or right arrow, and that says, yes, that's the formula. I'm done. Go on to the next thing. Oh, I guess I have to hit enter to verify. Oh, oh, I messed up. I oh, the right arrow messed me up too. I can't do right arrow or it'll mess me up. That's why the gross pay is over there in that four. Enter is the safest thing. There we go. Now we get state tax. Don't worry about the way too many decimal points. When we put things in comma format, it'll fix that. Now, can you figure out what tax percent is going to be? Well, it's these two added together divided by my gross pay will tell me what my tax percent is. So I type equal to start a formula. And because I'm going to be adding two things together and then dividing that total, I need to start a parenthesis. And I'm adding my federal tax plus, type the plus sign, state tax, which is over there in H4. Now I need to end the parenthesis because I'm going to get that number and divide the total taxes by my gross pay. So that's the formula for tax percent. The two taxes added together in parentheses divided by my original gross pay. That'll tell me, a, it'll give me a fraction that I'm gonna display as a percentage once I get the formula right. So two taxes added together in parentheses, that means total is up and then once you get the total, divide that by my gross pay. State tax multiplied by the point zero oh, five five. Yeah, that's what That's five and a half percent. What? That's my state tax. I got zero. Tax percent is the two taxes added together divided by the gross pay, way over there in that four. So I'm gonna do the control squiggly just so you can see all my formulas all together. Sorry. That's why that control squiggly is very helpful. Can you keep it on the tax percentage um, equation? So I uh, messed up. Here it is right here. Yeah. So con this is where control squiggly is nice, just to verify, hey, I, have I put formulas in the right places? Notice there are no, everything, if I, if I copy it down, there's no, nothing, or it, it, will, ch it will shift down a row if I copy these formulas for the other people. Keeps um, coming back to zero. Oh, you forgot the equal sign. You've got to put the equal sign in front of the line. There you go. And then enter. Thank you. Yep. And the whole point is here practicing formulas, you'll get used to how they're entered. That's the whole thing is do several formulas. Now we got one more formula, and then we're going to copy it down to the next one. Our net pay. And as you do it, you kind of want to think, does it make sense that I'm calculating things? Let's go ahead. I'm going to stay. I'm going to go back to the uh, control squiggly so I can see my numbers. Net pay. Again, I start with the equal formula, the equal sign. Net pay is my gross pay minus my total taxes. Net pay is gross pay minus my total taxes, so I'm going to put in percentage, or I'm going to put in parentheses, the two taxes add together in parentheses, federal tax plus state tax. And let's think about it, the, uh, the class isn't about understanding these formulas, but it helps to have at least a kind of a clue that yes, I have gross pay, subtracting my two taxes added together, yeah, that's then becomes my net pay. And in the real in your real world, you don't just subtract taxes, you subtract all sorts of other things like your amount of benefits you're paying for, your social security. Look at your pay tab sometime and see all the other things they subtract from your initial pay. This is what they tell you when they hire you, right? You get so much per hour at this pay rate, you, you say, oh yeah, I can go buy that big car. And you realize, oh wait a minute, I got to pay taxes. 
They take out some for my health benefits. They take out more for Social Security. They'll be taking more to pay for whatever the government decides to spend your money on, your, actually your grandchildren's money on. They'll be taking that out, and you get your net pay, and you just got to live with that, and budget according to your net pay. Don't budget according to your gross pay, or you will be very frustrated. Now, since we'd like to see this in a, in a decent uh, accounting style. Yes, question. What's the tax percent? Oh, tax percent Sorry. is the two added together, in parentheses, the federal plus the state added together, divided by the gross. That gives you a per, that gives you a fraction. We're gonna we're gonna display it as a percentage. Should I told to turn on the squigglies? Let's turn on the squigglies. Control squiggly, and I can see all my formulas right there. I'll go all the way out to net pay. Let's see, can I adjust my columns when I'm in squiggly mode? No, I can't. He likes to make them really wide for some reason when I go into show me the formulas mode. Okay. You're good? Yes. Okay. Now I'll control squiggly back to the numbers. Let's go ahead and with Brett, Betty's pay. Yes? Uh, Mike's is right. Oh, that means you have a reference to a low long cell. Let's take a look. Column signs are here. Let's go ahead and column left. Let's go ahead. Click on it. Thank you. Yes, exactly. Yes. Come back in the parentheses. Click on the growth button. Let's go ahead. And then we find us. So go in the left parentheses. Metal tag. Shoot the number. Plus. these numbers in the right format and then we'll copy down because they're they're really ugly we can always come back later on the other ones and adjust their format but let's get Benny's looking good let's see pay rate all the way up to state those are dollars so let's put let's put those in comma format home tab comma format don't panic if you see the call sign just double click on that column there we go and let's put net pay in, in comma format and since this is a fraction, we like, as we have at the title, we want that to be in a percentage format. We just click the percent style, and now that is in a percent style format. Now that we have all the nice format, I can select through all of Benny's calculations, and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, and I'm going to grab the fill handle and drag them down for all my other employees. I've only had to do it for Betty, check that I got it right. Now I can fill handle down, and I'm calculating everybody else's pay. Oh, oh what you press, hold on, wait. You just click the I just selected the numbers for Betty. I could copy paste or fill handle. That little, make sure, make sure you get the solid X or solid plus as you grab that little lower right hand fill handle. Yeah. So I, I did net pay, but when I just like hit that thing, it did. Uh, it didn't, uh, oh yeah, if you only do net pay, you're gonna get. What do we get? We're gonna get just dashes. Okay, it, but like it erased, like my net pay equation. Oh, so all of it. Oh, Control Z back to get the number back. So control Z. So I don't I highlight it all. It's not quick to find. No, no, no. Just Control Z. Control Z one at a time. And it goes back it undoes what you did. So then we'll do another control of these. There we go. Now select through all of them. Yeah. Now grab the lower right, make sure it's a fill handle and not moving it. Yeah, you're correct. You got to do a solid X. Now we need I think I'm about to leave it. Yeah. It's easy to mix up that fill handle from moving or select. Thank you. Never oh, because you did a fill handle over instead of the select. Control C. Control C. That means undo what you did with the case that's right. Now, select. Go back and select. That's selecting. That's not. That won't change. You actually would grab the fill handle. And that's it's easy to confuse the fill handle from the select. Oh, 
tenth of what the government's taking. He made his tax 0.2 percent. Wouldn't you love that? They only take two percent of yours. Okay, so I'm going to do what what you already have done. Select through Benny's formulas and fill handle down to, to Olga. Now it recalculates for all of them. Save that as last name EX2. Put last name EX2 because this is Excel Project 2. And yeah, you don't have to add anything more to the name of that. You want to save it in a safe place on your flash drive, on your OneDrive, on your Google Drive as an initial submission to Schoology. And treat that as backup. Save it in a place where you will be able to find it on Monday. And you can then have a wonderful day. Name it last day EX2. We're only partially done. We're, we have quite a bit, well, not a ton more to do. But this is a major part of Excel. You entered basic information about the employees. If you want to submit it as your first revision, that could serve as your backup. We will be adding to it, but you're welcome to submit it to Schoology and treat that as the backup of it because files do not have eternal security like you do. <laughs> and that's the end of the recording.